Welcome back. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa al-Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. On the occasion of the inauguration of the first concrete pouring process that will be used as the basis for the fourth nuclear unit of the Daba Peaceful Nuclear Power Plant. His Majesty the King commended the achievement and vital project and its importance in Egypt entering the era of the peaceful use of nuclear energy in a way that consolidates its leadership and position on the international arena and enhances construction and development for the benefit and prosperity of the people of Egypt. His Majesty praised what Egypt is witnessing thanks to the approach of its president in terms of pioneering development, vital projects, great civilizational development and the qualitative achievements it made in all fields. His Majesty stressed Egypt's pivotal and effective role in the Middle East and what it represents as a pillar and basic foundation for security and stability in the region. His Majesty also expressed Bahrain's pride in the close and established fraternal ties and historic relations with Egypt, which witnessed more development thanks to the support and common will of the two brotherly countries. His Royal Highness the Deputy King of Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa awarded 18 government service providers a gold classification for the excellence in service delivery under the fourth edition of the Takim Evaluation Programme in Gadebia Palace. His Royal Highness emphasised the importance of advancements in government services, embracing technology and displaying digital solutions. These efforts aim to deliver exceptional services that adhere to the highest standards of quality and efficiency. The overarching goal is to foster a culture of excellence, emphasising creativity and innovation to effectively contribute to the Kingdom's comprehensive development goals, led by His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness affirmed that the successes of Bahraini citizens are a source of pride, instilling strength and determination to bolster development efforts for the Kingdom and its people. He affirmed that Bahrainis remain at the core of the development efforts and form the cornerstone of various government initiatives. His Royal Highness then awarded the following government service centres, entities affiliated with the Ministry of Interior, Customs Clearance Services Centre, Seaport Customs Directorate at Customs Affairs, Comprehensive Air Freight Service Centre, Customs Affairs, Landports Customs Directorate at Customs Affairs, Driver's Licences at a Driving School Services, General Directorate of Traffic, General Directorate of Civil Defence at Maharek Security Complex Branch, Nationality Passports and Residence Affairs, Isa Town Branch. Nationality Passports and Residence Affairs, Maharak Branch. The Identity Card Centre Branch in Isa Town. The Information and E-Government Authority. Centres affiliated with the Ministry of Industry and Commerce, Bahrain Investor Centre. Precious Metals Assay Services. Consumer Protection Services. Centres affiliated with Tamkeen. Tamkeen Customer Service Centre at Seif Mall. Customer Service Centre Beit Al Tajar. Customer Service Centre at Zayat Town. Affiliated with the Electricity and Water Authority. Customer Service Centre Southern Area Municipality. Affiliated with the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Agriculture. Environment at Licensing Services Centre. Affiliated with the Supreme Council for Environment. Maharak Post Office of the Ministry affiliated with the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications. Customer Service Centre affiliated with the Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning. His Royal Highness congratulated the entities that received the gold classification, expressing pride in the accomplishments of the government service centres. He also noted the competence and proficiency of the employees, highlighting their pioneering role within government services. His Royal Highness called on all government service centres to follow the example set by the accredited centres to provide quality government services for all. His Royal Highness expressed thanks and appreciation to the Valuation Committee for their efforts, noting the importance of formulating and implementing policies that enhance competitiveness and efficiency in government services. In response, representatives from the recognised government service centres expressed their gratitude for His Royal Highness's ongoing support in improving public sector services, stating that the ward serves as an incentive to persist in delivering quality services to Bahraini citizens and residents. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and a number of senior officials attended the ceremony.
The Council of Representatives Speaker Ahmed Amisalem received the chairperson of the Korean Bahrain Parliamentary Friendship Association at the Korean National Assembly, Unhee Hwan. The speaker praised Bahraini Korean relations and their development in various aspects. He affirmed his support for strengthening economic partnership through exchanging visits, expertise and parliamentary experiences and unifying the two countries' positions in Asia and international forums. Amasalam referred to the increased bilateral trade exchange that amounted to one billion US dollars last year. The cabinet's approval of establishing Bahrain's diplomatic mission in Korea last May and the kingdom's hosting of the Korea Bahrain Business Forum last November. The chairperson expressed pride in the long-standing bilateral relations and affirmed the mutual keenness to enhance ties. Shura Council Chairman Ali Al Saleh met with Chairperson of the Korea Bahrain Parliamentary Friendship Association, Yoon Hee Kwon, at the Korean National Assembly and her accompanying delegation. Al Saleh affirmed Bahrain's commitment to strengthening legislative cooperation with Korea at the parliamentary level. He commended the growing volume of trade and industrial cooperation between Bahrain and Korea, noting that the Kingdom is one of the first countries to engage in business and investment relations with Korea. Asala pointed out that Bahraini parliamentary diplomacy is based on establishing relations and ties with the legislative councils and parliaments of brotherly and friendly countries and the solid foundations that promote common interests between countries. Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa honoured the winners of the Yusuf bin Ahmed Kanu Award in its 11th session. Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Asale attended the honouring ceremony. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah affirmed that the continuous growth and development witnessed by the scientific, artistic and cultural movement in Bahrain is the result of the support given to researchers, artists and intellectuals that embodies the visions and aspirations of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the follow-up of His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He explained that Bahrain is interested in boosting sciences, literature and all kinds of arts as it encourages scientific research and prepares the appropriate environment for it. He also noted that civil initiatives that support the establishment of specialised associations contributed in advancing the march of scientific, artistic and cultural progress in Bahrain. The Deputy Prime Minister praised the contributions of Yosef bin Ahmed Kanu Company which come within its belief in a concept of corporate social responsibility, which is in the interest of improving society and developing its members in various aspects. The chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Yosef bin Ahmed Kanu Award, Khaled Mohammed Kanu, praised the Deputy Prime Minister's role in supporting the initiatives adopted by the private sector.
very important conference, the bottom of the barrel, uh, is, which is a key conference uh, starting uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, bringing um, a lot of experts from companies that operate technologies that is working on, the la uh, on upgrading this very difficult product. In addition to the top technologies uh, uh, showing, showcasing their technologies that will help uh, extract additional values from such a product. So it's a, a great opportunity for a participant who works in these refineries to come and engage with such uh, high profile uh, people from the technology side and their peers from other refineries where they can exchange ideas. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs held its regular session, chaired by its president, Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa. The council expressed appreciation to His Majesty the King on the issuance of the Royal Order 63 of 2023, restructuring the Sunan Jafri Waqf Councils. The session congratulated the presidents and members of the councils for obtaining the Royal Trust. It hailed His Majesty's keenness to develop Islamic work in Bahrain consolidate authentic religious values and traditions and support Islamic affairs, especially the Islamic Wafs and its subsidiaries, considering it an important part of the Kingdom's history, identity, stability and values. The Council discussed the programmes of the Holy Quran Recitation and Teachers Preparation Institute. They also reviewed a report submitted by the Committee of Mosque Establishment and followed up on the latest developments regarding the projects being implemented for the construction and maintenance of several mosques. The Interior Minister General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa received UAE Inspector General of the Interior Ministry and President of the Interpol Major General Dr Ahmed Nasser Al Rais. The Chief of Public Security and Director General of Anti-Corruption and Economic and Electronic Security attended. The Interior Minister asserted the solid and historic ties between Bahrain and the UAE and the dedication to develop security cooperation and coordination. He hailed the cooperation between the Interior Ministry and the Interpol in fighting organised crime and facing security challenges. He expressed appreciation for Interpol's efforts and professionalism in supporting international police authorities in fighting international crimes to protect security. The two sides reviewed security topics that could promote cooperation and performance. The Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr Mohammed bin Dana, inaugurated the 10th edition of the Middle East Conference on Residual Fuel Oil and Catalytic Technology in Production, with the participation of experts, engineers and officials from companies specialised in various aspects of the local, regional and global oil industry. The conference discusses various topics related to raising the level of utilising remaining fuel oil according to global trends, challenges and requirements. The Minister affirmed Bahrain's hosting of the conference reflects its high status and reputation in hosting specialised events that attract more investments and contribute to strengthening relations with specialised companies to exchange expertise and information. He pointed out that the topics discussed in the conference would stimulate the improvement of environmentally friendly technologies and fulfil the goal of achieving carbon neutrality by 2060. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Aramehi, visited the Kuzam suburb project in Riyadh, one of Riyadh's largest residential areas, on the sidelines of her participation in the Real Estate Future Forum in Saudi Arabia. The Minister was briefed about the housing projects in the suburb, which is part of the Sakani programme that aims to enable Saudi citizens to own a housing unit within a variety of housing and financing options in cooperation with real estate developers. Aramehi was also briefed on the Ministry's plans for enhancing and diversifying housing services, as well as creating an environment that allows the private sector to develop residential projects with services and facilities which will benefit the real estate development industry and contribute to the national economy. She praised the housing solutions of the Saudi Ministry of Rural and Municipal Affairs and Housing. The Minister affirmed Saudi Arabia's efforts to diversify housing options through partnership with the private sector are similar in many aspects to Bahrain's policies for providing housing services to citizens.
the Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Arun Mehi, yesterday participated in a discussion session as part of the Real Estate Future Forum, hosted by the Saudi Ministry of Municipal Rural Affairs and Housing. With the participation of officials and specialists in the field of social housing and real estate at the local, regional and international levels. The Minister affirmed that the new programmes launched by the Ministry in partnership with the private sector contributed to increasing housing services and accelerating the fulfilment of housing requests. She reviewed the efforts of providing housing services through housing financing means and the Government Land Development Rights Programme, in addition to completing the implementation of projects in housing towns and the results achieved in this regard. Arun Mehi discussed government efforts to preserve urban heritage by highlighting the Maharak City Development Plan. She praised the efforts of the GCC countries in providing housing services to citizens and integrating them through the exchange of experiences and training. On the sidelines of her participation in the Real Estate Future Forum in Riyadh, the Minister of Housing and Urban Planning yesterday met with Saudi Minister of Municipal and Rural Affairs and Housing, Majid al Hukail. Arumehi affirmed that involving the private sector in programmes for providing social housing services contributes fundamentally to the sustainability of providing housing services to citizens, praising the Saudi experience in the field of diversifying housing options. The meeting reviewed topics related to plans to provide housing services in both countries and the topics discussed in the forum sessions. She reviewed the, the latest development plans and initiatives to provide housing services to citizens in Bahrain, such as the housing financing programme and the government land development programme, and completing the implementation of the housing projects across the kingdom. The Saudi minister stressed the keenness to strengthen cooperation and exchange expertise to develop housing services provided to citizens. The Minister of Tourism, Fatim al Sarafi, met with Executive Vice President at Dubai World Trade Center, Mahi Jafar, the Director of Abu Dhabi Convention and Exhibition Bureau at the Department of Culture and Tourism, Mubarak al Shamsi, and Director of Oman Convention Bureau at the Ministry of Heritage and Tourism, Khaled al Sajja Ali. Al Sarafi noted the Kingdom's keenness to continue developing the conferences and exhibition sector by providing it with various requirements and facilities which will contribute to achieving the goals of the Bahrain 2022 to 2026 tourism strategy. The meeting focused on ways to enhance aspects of cooperation to advance the convention and conference industry at the GCC countries level. The minister stressed the importance of continuing to promote business tourism. The GCC officials praised the kingdom's ambitious tourism strategy. Under the patronage of the Secretary-General of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, Dr Mustafa al Sayed, the RHF launched the ISAD initiative to furnish homes. Dr al Sayed visited one of the homes that benefited from the initiative to inspect the completion rate in the presence of the homeowner. He stated that this initiative comes within the Foundation's interest in diversifying its services to beneficiaries, including widows, orphans and families in need which is a new pioneering project that was launched to unite official efforts in supporting the furnishing of the homes in Bahraini families in need. The Financial Intelligence National Centre held a workshop on international cooperation and coordination for evaluating countries with regional and international participation. The event is organised in collaboration with the centre to promote ongoing partnership in combating terrorist financing. The workshop aimed to proactively confront threats in partnership with the centre through an in-depth analysis of the Financial Action Task Force, mutual assessment reports of the member states. It also aimed to promote a better understanding of national frameworks and regional and international cooperation to tackle weak points and challenges and improve international cooperation strategies. The workshop showcased Bahrain's experience in the mutual evaluation process and the role of external cooperation in combating terrorism financing, in addition to presenting the most prominent challenges and best practices in international cooperation. Hosting the workshop comes as part of the Centre's keenness to adhere to international standards, including them in Bahrain's str strategic economic protection plans and contribute to strengthening the global network system. This is a working group and a multilateral effort 
that is of the highest importance for the government of the United States and the Department of the Treasury in order to uh, build upon the work that we've been doing together with the TFTC and looking forward to combating uh, terrorist financing and money laundering that the government of the United States and the Treasury Department looks with the highest priority to the work that we do in cooperation with our friends and colleagues and allies here in the Kingdom of Bahrain, but also with all of our partners in the TFTC and uh, our co-chairs, uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So we, again, are very grateful to have the opportunity to speak with uh, our colleagues here and to see all of our friends and colleagues here in the Kingdom of Bahrain and to have this opportunity to continue to work together on this really critical effort. I'm excited about being here today uh, and thank you to our hosts from the Kingdom of Bahrain for hosting this important workshop. The TFTC was created in 2017 as a coalition between the United States and the six GCC countries with the Saudis as our co-chairs. The TFTC has three important lines of effort. The first is information sharing on critical threats related to the Gulf region. The second is capacity building and working on workshops related to AML and CFT, similar to the workshop that we held here today on international cooperation. Our last line of effort is joint designations, working on different targets and entities through the TFTC to come together and push back on terror finance. Bahrain Airport Company affirmed that work is underway to open the express cargo village at Bahrain International Airport soon and that the first phase of the warehouses has been completed as the company hopes to deliver two of the warehouses to FedEx soon so that they can complete the preparation by providing them with offices, equipment and a mechanism for sorting parcels and freight goods. The CEO of Bahrain Airport Company, Mohammed Al Bin Fala, asserted in a press statement that the Express Cargo Village project extends over an area of 25,000 square metres north of the runway at Bahrain International Airport. Inspiring works by renowned Bahraini artists Agada Kunji and Iskandar Dawani were featured at the exhibition Representation and Significance of Imagination. The exhibition was hosted by Al Riak Art Space and explored the concept of imagination, which plays a crucial role in human cognition and creativity. Kunji is renowned for her photography, and her images are known for depicting landscapes and people from across the world. Her places have been exhibited in the US and the Middle East, and she has received numerous awards. Meanwhile, Adawani is a versatile artist who explores various artistic forms, from painting to illustration, abstraction and poetry. His contemporary portraits resonate with vivid realism and profound emotional depth, while his fusion of text and imagery challenges conventional boundaries between language and visual representation. So many people get to go uh, and see artists' shows or writers, whoever they might be, that have inspired them, but at that point they have already passed away. So we thought, why not bring our studio here and people can come and experience um, what it would be like to walk into our studio because most times artists we're a lot more introverted we don't like people to come into our space so as you can see in my room here i have basically transported half of my studio here so that um, people can come and explore it and uh, you know get ideas on what it really like is like in our private lives this is a representation of my uh, my art studio and uh, it's a very crowded space and uh, I have my CDs and my books and stuff which, you know, I take uh, uh, ideas off, you know, uh, inspiration from the books. Um, so for me, it's a lifeline. I need to do this. Like, I, I'm uh, quite a prolific artist, so I try and do at least one art piece um, every day and I post it on my Instagram and it just shows like different types of styles and I try and do something different every day. What we are trying to um, add to the experience for Overwalk, uh, the platform here, it's a platform for creativity, for artists. They do, you don't have to be um, uh, exposed that much. What matters is the quality of the talents we have. We believe in Ghada's talent and we believe in Iskander's talent and we believe they have a lot to give more. So we invited them to bring their studios here because of the diversity of their approach, the way they, they 
are um, uh, tackling subjects, but the most important thing we felt is like the dialogue between them. And what we created is like his vision about Ghada and Ghada's vision about Skander and how they see themselves uh, in the future or in the past. Or, or This is what we are trying to really, a platform for creativity, for discussion, and that's what we are known in, it, in Bahrain. It's always openness.